She move her body like a shaman All in my head so much in common Just say that word baby I'm on it If this ain't love then I don't want it She move her body like a shaman molested or raped and are having a difficult time overcoming it that so feminine part that has been abused in them exactly and they don't understand it and then they think they do meaning us the independent woman the one that is identified with my trauma like i know what i got yeah. they, they don't like that they, they stand off it. yeah because remember the male energy is who molested their female energy so now you come with your god that female energy when you're supposed to be a female but you come with a whole masculine energy masculine. what are you gonna do with that that shit remind me of something need to heal yes that's deep. That's mm-hmm. deep. Because mm-hmm. I don't know for sure anybody that I've dealt with in my past. But as I age and start thinking about just the men that I've encountered and how they treated me and when they treated me different, they all treated me different when I shared my truth. Mm-hmm. And they, they started to actually realize what attracted them to me. And that's yes. what I say. We all are mirrors. Yes. So you got to ask yourself, what is it about this person that, that I am attracted you. to? Preach. Yes, and if honey. I'm if you're if you're attracted to a person that's very truthful and it has a lot of pain, I mean the, the proof is right there sitting in the pudding. Yeah, honey. Yeah, like honey. you just got to be real with yourself. And it's Soaking sad, in that pudding. Say, it's a, that's the opportunity for you to heal, not an opportunity for you to turn the other way. Yes, honey. Like, mm-hmm. Or judge that person's story because you can't relate. Okay, it is not against yeah. nature because you can't relate. What you can do is give a sympathetic right. shoulder or listen. You don't have to relate to every story and emotion that a person is telling you and letting you feel. You don't have to. You sit there. You no. give them a pat on the shoulder. Tell them, I don't understand. I can't relate. But... I feel your pain. I want to. But uh, right. understand that shit. You don't But they have don't. To. They don't be feeling it. They, they here's block the thing. from feeling it. Here's the thing that I don't I've ran think. into people who felt it and I've seen the difference from people who The I thing tell. about it is that I don't take them not relating or feeling anymore because they don't, we, we were never taught how to. Right. Know, right. And like you and I have been blessed. I haven't been to a therapist for my shit. And I overcome my oh, shit. Okay. Understand? I've never been. I yes. read books. My grandmother. Here's what I tell people. My grandmother yep. is Ilya, Ilania Van Zandt. That is my grandmother. Right there. <laughs> Understand? Yes. You know who my father is? Will Smith. Not the actor Will Smith. The philosopher Will Smith. The oh. deep Will Smith. Mm. Besides that, he let you see when he's doing interviews. Those of who I have adopted to help my growth understand Mm -hmm. if you're going to take somebody in a celebrity status take people who makes you better my uncles my uncles are less brown understand those are my uncles out there don't don't get that shit twisted that man is the shit to me right now (laughs) okay somebody just put me on him not too long ago (laughs) you oh for real no he he is my uncle and there are other few uncles out there that i have adopted as well my mother she is my mother. The woman that burnt me, she ain't gonna get replaced. That woman is so freaking strong. So she is my mother. Aww. She's sticking my mother. So at the end of the day, yeah. adopt people who you know can can be put into your growth. So a lot of us haven't been taught how to relate to a person, how to help a person through. They feel helpless. So for me, if I meet somebody and I decide, like that's a big decision to tell you my mm-hmm. story and I realize, yeah, you can't relate. I don't take it personal because hell, you don't right. even know how to. You don't know how yeah. to do it. It's fine. But then it seems like they will take that personal. Yeah. So, okay, let me ask you this. Like, so how do you, like, it, what is that then? Right? Like, if we're, if we thought we were friends, but then you can't take, My you know, you don't want to relate. Or, yeah, so, like, what is that? What is that? Like, that's I mean, something you don't understand. Because, again, is there is their perception of you. They see you as a person that they meet you happy they meet mm-hmm. you however they meet you they meet you clubbing a go get a girl blah 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 blah. all of a sudden <laughs> you want this is their perception right all of a sudden you want to bring your drama girl i am friends with you for your drama keep that shit there yeah. that is that type right. they've seen the real pain you so it, you never know what they've been through in terms of if they had another friend 
who was a person who'd been through that and all of a sudden you know how I have some people who always take their shit and own it like man you know I can't do this because that happened to me you know I can't yeah. go around the me victim. he smell exactly the victim people there we go so they may think you take that you are one of those people and prejudge you on that so then they have to learn to see, well, no, I actually not type of that. I just telling you this because, yo, you might be, you my friend. I just want you to know me. I think that's where that person comes into play and say, yo, I just decide to show you my vulnerable side. That's all it is. I don't want you to come here and think that I'm trying to be a victim. So I think it takes upon us because we don't know right. what they had in their shit. Say, hey, I'm only telling right. you this because I actually trust you. And I want you to see me as mm-hmm. me. And all of this is me. Right. So it's not for pressuring. It's not yeah. for nothing. I just feel good. And I'm telling you this because I want you to right. see me as me. Simple. <laughs> for me, right. I think a lot of people always feel like they don't know what to do. And when they don't know what to do, they react in a negative light. Instead of simply saying, oh. I don't know what to do with your pain. Instead of asking, so what do you want from me? Or what do you want me to do after you tell me that? Teach me. Right? It's the truth. We got to learn that. You're saying nothing but the truth. That's facts. Yeah. facts. We got to be honest. (laughs) You got to be honest and you got to communicate. If you really love me and you care about me and you want to help or you want to be there for me and you don't know how, then just say that. Because a lot of the times we do know what we need. A lot of us do know what yes. we need, but people don't ask. <laughs> yeah, don't ask. I'm not going to voluntarily just tell you because okay, you're not putting myself in a position. Yeah. Of, so, you know what I mean? Being judged again. <laughs> yeah. Or being the type that's going to be like, to... go ahead, go ahead, boo, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Be the type. Go ahead, you got it. Are you going to think that you're the type that, you know how I'm telling you how to love me? Oh, so you just want control how I can love you? Are we? We may, <laughs> some of us may not actually come and tell you, hey, um, because I'll tell you that, right? I just want you to be normal with me or whatever. I don't want you to, I don't want to have to tell you that. Come and ask me. Hey, so again, that was a word right there. <laughs> because exactly. they don't realize that that's all we want. Like treat me like I'm normal. Boom. Why? It, 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 sh- it shouldn't be that I tell you my pain and now you're going to treat me different. Girl, we got to talk about that in relationship. You know, when you tell yeah. your man, girl, did that shit happen to you? And he all, see you again. This is okay. Like seriously, my current boyfriend, I told him mm-hmm. a few years ago, I wasn't planning to tell him because I lost our second kid. I said, listen, okay, I'm going to give you a window. I think I figured out why I lost the kids. And I said, I don't want to tell you, but I want you to know because I want you to make the decision now if you want to continue this relationship in a possibility that I may not be able to give you kids and I know that you want kids. So I told him and he understood. He hugged me. It was all good. He, everything was good. And after that, it's like, I never tell he be. My man, just be himself. He never brought oh, it back okay. up. Yeah. He never had sex with me like, oh, shit, she's an abuser. He never, nothing. It's like nothing happened. <laughs> that yeah. is what we want, male and female yeah. friends. Like, seriously. And if, he, if it's so that we tell you, yo, we don't like you, we don't like to have sex in this position. Okay, let's be real here. If I tell yeah. you, right, I don't like for you to have sex it, with me not me me this is not my personal right, thing right. but i'm just saying if I, you don't know how to have sex with me in in doggy position or whatever it is not for you to say we ain't gonna ever do doggy position it is for you yeah. to change my perspective on doggy position buddy it is for you to say i know that you don't love it but let me teach you and put a different memory in your head about that position mm-hmm. that's all what do you think I- that's I what yes I, that's why I said pain like to me pain is power because it's like you're helping me reclaim my power yes. like that was my 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 the the honestly it's crazy but we alone so it is what it is the when I had an orgasm it was amazing because I had realized in that moment that I it was a whole nother part of sex that I actually wasn't even exposed to right. because I wasn't interested when they were forcing it on me it wasn't right. interest I was not having no I wasn't it wasn't fun it didn't feel good it didn't feel like oh this art. But then it was like, you know what? I actually have still a part of me that I can actually take back because I haven't given myself to a man in that way. And that's when I learned when I had my first orgasm in my 20s. I'm like, wait a minute. I mean, honestly, I had already had my son. And it happened after that. And I was like, yo, like my life was like 
going in different way. Like that's what mm. I like about it because it would it showed me that there was no such thing as normal, really. Mm. Like the way your stuff happens is all how it happens in your life. Like and how you pick it up and when you pick it up is to me that's what matters. And when I started to notice that I had the ability to orgasm, I didn't even want to give my body to nobody. Mm. Totally. Like it made, it made me want to, I actually realized that I had, that's when I started realizing like, it's a power in me that I'm not even aware of mm-hmm. and that I couldn't mm-hmm. see because my pain was so much. That's what I said. My, I have a poem called Reflection mm-hmm. and I say like, you know, um, the reflection in the mirror is blurry because she's too busy, you know, focusing on those worries. Mm-hmm. And it's the truth. I, I hated myself in, when I looked in the mirror, I pull, pulled myself apart in many different pieces mm-hmm. and I'm like, why do I keep doing this? Mm-hmm. And this goes back into the topic again. The first person that ever told me that I was beautiful was the person that raped me. Wow. <laughs> so it's like, I never Shit. could even accept. Yeah, somebody said that, that you're beautiful, girl. But you know what's crazy? I didn't hear it after that either, though. Wow. So as I grew up in my life, I got I got judged. I was super skinny. Like, oh, she got big head. She got big nose. Like, you know, kids being kids, they right, just kept right, teasing right. me. But then I'm like, when I got older, I think maybe like 24. <laughs> And then that's what triggered a healing in another way. Because I'm like, why is it? Why are you so upset that people are seeing you're beautiful? Why are you so upset that people are seeing it, that they like your hair? Or, something like that? or you know why? And then again, I started noticing. Okay, these are triggered. This is the trigger. Like this is what is what is this doing to me? And when I went back to try to think of the last time I heard someone call me beautiful, it was not my mom. It was not my dad. Yes. It was nobody in my family because I was dark. <laughs> so it was mm. like you know that's the issue too. I wasn't the light cousin. I wasn't the cute one. So the yes. adults in my family never said, oh, she look cute. Y'all look at her. It never. So it was mm-hmm. like, why it had, Why did it have to be him? Like, he the mm-hmm. one that was obsessed with me. He, my actually, my um, rapist actually got locked up from in jail. And he was writing me letters and reminding me of all of the things that the he hell? to me. Girl. And so it was like, no, I'm so serious. Like, I can't yeah. make this shit up. <laughs> He was writing me letters. And unfortunately, my family, they wasn't intercepting them letters. Them letters didn't come open. Them letters came closed saying, here go your letter, so-and-so. And I'm reading it. And I'm like, so wait a minute, this shit did happen? Like, you know, because then you got that part in your mind where it's like, did this really happen? Oh, he or did a, it not? He and he creep. reminded me. Oh, Damn. he's a big creep. He was telling me, like, when we got older, that we were going to get me. And I started getting scared. Because I'm like, he was telling me, like, he was, we were going to be together when I got older. And I'm just like, but I didn't want to. Like, I didn't want to. But I'm telling you, mentally, he was, he, was, he was fucking me up. And that goes back in what I wanted to bring up, too, when you were saying about the things that we try to do to regain our sexuality. I felt in my mind that I was a virgin because I had never given my body willingly to, to him. anybody. Girl! However, I that knew logically... Important. Logically, technically speaking, Physically. it wasn't actually true. Yeah. So it kind of fucked me up a lot. But what I'm saying is I actually, I, I relabeled myself as a freak ass version. Damn. So because people would li- like, I was in school and one time they grabbed my book of poems and it was nothing but nasty poems. Damn. And they like, yo, you writing some, some, what is this? And I'm like, I'm trying to get these nasty images out of my head. Right. Honestly. So right. that was all I had was to write about what he, what he did and try mm-hmm. to like, Flip it in a way, mm-hmm. like where it was like make it okay, acceptable. Make it sense. Yeah, make it make sense exactly. Like make this make sense, and you know, again, me trying to reclaim my power back, yes. and it, it wasn't working. It actually mm-hmm. made it worse because, like I said, now they was like, "Oh, but I thought you said you was a virgin." And I'm like, "Oh shit, shit, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm a freak ass, I'm a freak ass virgin," and, and that was my thing. Like people was right. like, "Yo, shit, that girl, that girl," and like I, I, again, I end up creating a whole nother um identity, the ego. Like I started creating a whole nother identity to protect Yourself. who I really was. I didn't want to walk around and say I got raped and I got molested and da da da. So I'm like, look, I know shit, but I'm I'm just freaky like that. And right. you know, kids didn't pay it, pay it no mind. They didn't right. really care. But yeah. when I look back at it, I was like, damn. So it's like, damn, you was, you it's was not, not like you. Was but here's the thing: you had something to keep track of that shit. That's the thing. You had yeah. books that you can go back and be like, yo, damn, this is the the darkness that I was in. You know, and this I is where I am. The, I'm, I'm so upset because that book that I had would be so powerful right now. Right now, but girl. My, my, my ego, like everything that I was trying to, I, 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 when I was younger in my teens, I was trying to almost suppress it mm-hmm. in a certain kind of way. And I remember my mom found that book. And, and by that time, by the time I started writing, I was actually getting physically abused by my mom's mm-hmm. husband at the time. 
and he wasn't even my dad. He was beating mm. my asses. He was abusing me, abusing his kids, and abusing my mom. And he started to sexually come on to me as well. Mm. So I was like, I am not getting raped again, you know, right. so and so forth. But um, before I ran away, my mom filmed that book. And I will mm-hmm. never forget this because in the book, it was all of this shit in the book that she should have been like, what is going on with my daughter? Mm-hmm. And the only thing that she that, she, that bothered her in the book was the fact that I was negatively talking about her husband. And I'm just like, what? Shh. So honestly, from that from that moment forward, I actually stopped writing, Queen. I just now start writing when I told you I got triggered with my son. Yo, I you know what that medicine. is? I, I threw the book out and start, I stopped. And again, I lost a part of who I was mm-hmm. because Look at me now. I'm almost 30 and I love I love poetry. I love writing. I, but mm. I, I suppressed that from 16 mm. to like 20, 20 something. Like I didn't even want to write it anymore because it, it I guess it didn't uh, work in a way that I, I don't know why. <laughs> like genu- like specifically in that moment why I did it, but I mm. threw it away. I stopped writing. And I stopped Here's being the thing. As- me. The thing about um, that that I've noticed. Thank God my mom never did that, but I've been looking at other moms as well. And I find that a lot of women, when you tell them something about their man, you're not talking about a person's, you know, we may see this person as our father, our stepfather, right? But they see this person Mm -hmm. as their man, okay? So when we go to them talking about, yeah, your husband or your man or whatever your case did this to me, you are crushing their reality of this perfect yeah. person in their mind no matter that this person has faults it's still perfect in their mind so you're coming here telling me things that i don't want to face and i don't want to see because right now my circumstances does not enable me to see this reality that you're trying to pull me in it's like trying to tell right. people that jesus ain't real or something and people are like oh shit what are you trying to do yeah. you know i know this right. shit all like, my life going, where are we going with this yeah exactly <laughs> So I, I figure that mothers don't want their reality to be mixed, me, uh, messed up. Now, this is for females out there. This is just a message to you guys. Don't take your mother's... I know that you want your mother or your father, whomever it is that you may have told, to say, oh my gosh, I'm going to protect my child, but they never did. Remember, that person is also a human being. And you are telling this person something that's going to mess up their reality. You don't have this person with this person because I live in themselves. I have nowhere to go. He is financially helping me and the kids. So what if you have to sacrifice yeah. yourself? You don't know if that's that person thinking. It has nothing. It's survival mode. Most of what happened in reaction from family members are survival. For my family, they are huge in Christianity. And when they found out, they shipped me here to BIM, right? To Barbados. And they shipped me out. No one spoke about it. No one said anything. Everything was A-OK. And they didn't tell a single family member. My aunts, my mom. And that's it. My mother's side didn't even know what happened, right? So yeah. they didn't tell another person. You know what they said to me when they found out? Don't tell nobody about it because we don't want nobody else to find out about what happened. We don't want to let people think. I don't want people to think worse of me. It ain't nothing to do with you. It's nothing to do with me or the child that happened. But when they say something like that, when we get older, think about it. They're more yeah. trying to... Um, put up this facade of keeping it whole, Clearly. keeping it perfect. So the same yeah, thing with your mother. Exactly. Oh, sure. There we go. The same thing with mom, your mother. Like, like, I think it. this is where I want to add to what you're saying. Mm-hmm. This is where listening is the most helpful because mm-hmm. I don't have any ill feelings towards anybody. Yeah, like anybody. I mean, like not my abuse. Like that is between you and God. Like oh. that's just how I feel. <laughs> yeah. Because I listened to y'all. Like I kept telling that to my mom, my dad. Like I'm like, but I was listening to you. Mm-hmm. I heard what you were saying. I mm-hmm. actually was able to piece this all this I was trying to say. I was actually able to piece myself together better because of the fact that I listened to them. Mm-hmm. So what you just said, like when you when you're healing and you're thinking, like, well, they did say this and they did say that. Like it, you gotta take it all. Because then you see, like, yeah, this was not personal. Unfortunately, this person had pain, this person had pain, this person had pain. And then them not being able to see their pain is why they were not trying to accept mine. It's too much. It's too much for them. And again, this goes back into the whole parenting with my son. When you have a child, I feel like you now become, that's going to sound weird. Because I'm like, I feel like you, like, you now, it's like a sandwich to me. Mm -hmm. Like, when you had, when you, when you, like, it's like, okay, like your parents is one slice of bread and then you, the meat in the middle. But then when you have another child, it's like that kind it kind of seemed like it the roles definitely switch over. Now it's like mm-hmm. I don't want to be trapped in the middle. 
Like, so when I look, what I'm trying to say is like, I look at my mom and my dad and I know that they're, they, I was the other half of bread for them. Mm-hmm. They had me and they were to be in the middle and then their, their upbringing, their childhood, their parents and how they felt and what happened to them was the other side. And then they felt stuck in the middle mm-hmm. and it felt like I was the burden because mm-hmm. I was the new addition. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, how do, then when I had my son, I'm like, well, I don't want to be stuck in the middle. I don't right. want to be, you know so stuck and traumatized that I can't see my son on this side. Right. I don't want that because they couldn't, they still, honestly, like I love my mom and my dad. They still can't see me. <laughs> like they still can't. And, and mm-hmm. I know why, because again, the parts that needed, they are not willing to accept and ready to accept. Right. They have to first accept within In themselves. themselves. And then it goes from the inner child. And then you got the shadow work too. The shadow work, your shadow self, the person that mm-hmm. you was as a reaction to all of those bad yes. things that happened to you. That's how people don't want to heal. That's how people don't want to keep it real. Because then mm-hmm. it was like, I know these things happened to me, but this is what I did because uh, my way of suppressing and coping ended up making me do other things. Mm-hmm. And then now you got too much and people don't want to deal with that either. But again, it's not that deep. Just just work through it. Like you just mm-hmm. got to work through all of those emotions and feelings and keep it real. You got to go back and apologize. Go back and apologize. I have yet to receive apologies from anybody in my right, life. Right, that right, right. said, you know, I'm sorry that this happened to you. Not one person. And yep, I actually ended up going I can to agree face there. My, I start going to face my, I actually went to face my pedophile, my my, um, my rapist in court. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was alone. My mom didn't show up. My dad didn't show up. My mm-hmm. aunts, my grandma, they, all the people that actually knew he was around our family mm-hmm. didn't even show up to court. Mm-hmm. And when I lost the court case, because I lost the court case, Hmm. When I lost the court case, they said, well, her mom, her own mom don't believe her. So Why the hell are we going to believe her? Yeah. So well, it's like when people say, well, I'm going to go to court. And it's like, hmm. it's so many levels to these devils. Yeah. That's why I just think that reflecting is the most important. Self-reflecting, self-realization, Girl. reflecting and acceptance are the most important. I feel like before we react, you got people like, I got to go. I got to, got to, got to, got to react and realize again, we are still in this world. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So it's like, don't run and I think go back to what you were saying too with the, the whole victimization. Like I guess like what kind of victim are you? I think that's mm-hmm. a good topic too because it is. Got, I, from what I've noticed, you do have victims like, like us who say, you know, I'm not a victim. Yes. <laughs> I know what happened to me, but I'm not a victim though. Like for me, I got tired of being called broken because mm-hmm. I felt like the people that were calling me broken had fuck, they had problems themselves. It's true. So it's like how can you call me broken? And you can't recognize your you. brokenness. How is that fair to me? And now you're just putting me down and making me feel more shitty about myself. But in my mind, I had to make sense of it all. Yes. And I realized we all broken. If I'm broken, yes. then you broken. Yes. Uh, you know what I mean? Listen. Like, it's not, fair. Because, it's not fair. Because check it. <laughs> Even if you were never sexually abused, you were never raped, anything of that area, you're still broken. You're still broken because you've lost your roots. Your ancestors lost their roots. Come you're on, under now. the wrong educational system. You're underneath the wrong religion system. You're eating the wrong damn food. You're watching the wrong damn program. You're in a matrix. You are broken as well. You're parenting wrong. You're loving wrong. You're having sex wrong. Boo. You're broken. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> That's how I feel. Well, okay. So, so wait, so do you want to have a real conversation now? I don't know. Have a real conversation now? That's Thank you. Not to you, but it's like to them. Like, okay, so now can you see? Now you can see me. Because Thank you. you, can't, you it's, it don't work that way. Yes. and i think that is what makes that's victim blaming to me right there when you Ooh. got people who 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 make you feel bad about mm-hmm. what happened to you but then they want to say well you know it's not your fault well shit you making me feel like it's my fault <laughs> you can't say it's not my fault but then that's exactly what you're doing you're judging right. based off of something they're that trying to they're you. trying to say that their reality is more perfect than you so because i haven't witnessed your shit i'm more better than you it's not comparison to see who's better than who like that is so messed up in our society be ain't it dude I'm and i got a part i say i say you got to see further you got to see further than your reality because i had so many people who who didn't want to hear my pain who didn't care less about what i was going through until right. they start getting depressed yeah until they start feeling anxiety yes. until they might have got a fibromyalgia dose or whatever the case Oh, now you want to hear and listen. That's mm-hmm. not fair to me. And that's when I had to realize the importance of creating boundaries. Like, yes. no, that's not fair. Boundaries, because yeah. if I've been talking to you for the last 25 years of my life, and then now you realize that you might have listened, that's not, listen, yeah. not fair. No, go yes. get a counselor. <laughs> Pay somebody else for what I was trying to tell you this whole time. And right, I think, right, again, right. this is important, especially as a victim. Like, people that have been victimized, we have to set boundaries. We have to. 
Mm -hmm. We have to. Mm -hmm. We have to. Mm -hmm. have to. Girl. I can't say this enough. Girl. To, I'm telling that, you. To me, that is like the, that's the beginning of, of, the, of the new to me. Because people are forced to respect you. Goes back in what you were saying earlier. If I carry myself a certain kind of way, you're not going to treat me any different. Yes. You're not. You can't. No. <laughs> but the boundary is literally that right there. Like the boundary mm. is what creates that for you. You already know where we at. Like, no. Mm. No, you can't do that to me no more. I'm not that person. That person that you thought I was, she gone. Yeah. She gone. For real. Honey. She gone. Listen. She gone. It's getting to a two hour mark, guys. We are making this a series. But as I always tell you guys yeah. in the video that I love, and you see how long this shit is. It's almost two hours. I edit this shit. Oh, why are we busting it up? <laughs> We've been busting this and shit like, up. We, we ain't touched we nothing yet. Go either. Girl, we yeah. ain't touched nothing yet because you talking and we I talking and you see me writing, right? I got 10 topics, B, under this one thing. Oh. I have 10 topics already. So we are going to be making this a series for all you guys out there upon my other sisterhood series and other series as well. She and I are going to be cutting this shit up, breaking it down, mincing it up to let you realize that, yo, this is just something that happened to you, but it is not you, right? So at the end of the day, don't take it personal. Heal. It happened. You need to heal to move on, to live your life. Find out about yourself. Love yourself. Redo yourself. You redo yourself from the bottom up. You redo all the bad things that happen to you. If this person say you're beautiful like she and you want to look at beautiful in a positive light, you tell yourself you're beautiful and then tell yourself why you're beautiful. You're beautiful because you're confident. You're beautiful because you look good in this dress. You're beautiful because of this. Their meaning behind you're beautiful and the meaning behind you're beautiful are two completely different things. So look at it from that perspective. When you look at yourself in the mirror and say, oh my gosh, I'm broken. Why are you broken? Right. Label the things that you call yourself. Question it. Right. Why am I broken? Why am I ugly? Why am I sharp? Why is this? You find those whys in it. Why are you telling yourself? Exactly. So we're going to cut this short. I'm going to let her do what she got to do in terms of saying her last word if she wants to. But we're going to be back. We're going to be talking a lot, girl. We're going to be talking a lot. Listen, I'm here for it. <laughs> me too i fussy this is it. not how i envision it happening but i do i could care yeah. less this is perfect yeah. and what i wanted to do with my mom because she is we don't ever think about her and remember she was married to this person right and i wanted mm -hmm. her as a mother to sit down and talk to me how she felt hearing something like this happened to her mom so i want to do that with her as well when she of course yeah. is comes up because we are comes up with this shit but she has a mom to see oh. her child go through this it's gonna be hard for her as well so yeah that's this, i mean i mean i gotta see that that's that's the, that's gonna be crazy i think i know that'll help a lot of people a lot of especially moms. mom yeah yes, it is because it's so, hard it is extremely hard. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so Just I'm start really, with that, everything that you said. Yeah, I'm really happy that you're a part of this. Honestly, thank you for your authenticity. And I thank you so much, actually, for putting this out there. Because you know this is going online and you are able to be so freaking brave to oh. say this online. This is really amazing. So thank you so much That's for true. being that as well. Yeah, thank yeah. you for uh, allowing me on this platform and Girl. inviting me here and having Girl. me here. Ain't even thank nothing. You. You're very it's welcome. Just, it's just the truth, you know. And luckily, and this is one thing I will say: there's nothing that I said on here that people already don't know who yes. already who actually know me in real life. Like they mm -hmm. they know already. <laughs> mm -hmm. So to see it is just like for them to believe it. But mm -hmm. we already had these. Like what you yes. said when you asked, I had conversations with everybody in my family before mm -hmm. I even started my business because I'm like, how could I go out here and try to help the world and mm -hmm. I had to help my family? Yes. So I actually did try to address the elephant in the room within mm -hmm. my own family, but that elephant was so big and it made people so uncomfortable that they didn't think, I guess, that we were strong enough to come together and do it as a family. Mm -hmm. So me, you are my family. Yes, <laughs> like that's, that's why it's like, you know, I'm, I'm going to share my truth and, and continue to engage with others in their truth so we can get to the root of this stuff and move on with our lives in a good way. Like you said, overcome yes. it all. That's just the most important. Mm -hmm. that's, I, don't, I don't have nothing to add. I'm excited just for more, you know. <laughs> Likewise. Because, yeah. yeah, man, I fussy. I fussy about it and I can't wait for us to record again. Whatever topic, there are so many topics that we have to 
discuss and I know this is a fact that this series is going to help a lot of women because I've seen sexual abuse um, videos online and these people just talk about their experience but they never talk about how they overcome, how to get over the smallest triggers. Like we don't ever talk about how people overcome the triggers of something like that happening. So I know that this because we're going to break down every little detail to do with the sexual abuse and how we overcome it and yeah. thinking yeah what what we thought about it like we don't sit down and say this is my thought about it uh, we don't be true about the thinking like did we even like it was it the, the fact that we didn't say anything is because we like it we think those things you know so we got to be real with yeah. those thoughts and let people realize like say it all out. thank you right so and you realize it you realize through it like i said it out loud and then you realize if it is it, not true it. yes because yep. exactly. so, it's not true it won't make sense thank you very much with that being said guys go ahead what are you saying no 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 i was saying it's just it's just the truth like i didn't i did not like that i didn't even ask for it mm-hmm. you can't like you're not gonna like something that you didn't ask for mm-hmm. agree exactly and that is she, she just still wants to say something profound like i didn't ask for it why would i like it they want me to believe that i like it but i didn't it just happened because I'm not that strong and I couldn't fight it off. And for me, this is my personal experience here now that I'm going to say, and I know a lot of people are going to relate to this. For me, in my experience, I live with this person. This person was my elder. This person was my freaking bloodline. And I'm like, if I tell somebody, his ass is going to beat the shit out of me. And if I do tell my mother and she pick up and go, where the hell are we going to go? We had nowhere to live. So what the hell? I, I can't do right that. There. That's Thank a topic you. right there. That's a topic right there. That's a topic right there because that that was one of my hardest. He the guy the guy that did what he did. He was he was like I said he was a part of the family, and I was I was getting sent down there for summers. So yeah. he, he was making sure we was good. He was make, he was feeding us, and it's like he really turned into a monster yes. at a certain amount of time. That's a great topic because I think that is where it comes from when you got the same person that's nurturing you and loving you supposedly, and mm-hmm. you know supposed to here to take care of you. Mm-hmm. That does bad things to you. Mm-hmm. That's, that's yeah. a topic within itself. That right? is because I, I could go. On, I can definitely go. On. <laughs> that, well, that was very confusing. Very, very. Bad guy. I person it as the nurturer is the bad guy. Person it as that. That's what I'm putting it as. Mm. With that being said, guys, is over two hours now. <laughs> And I'm going to make this a two parts into this series because I can't put up a whole two hour video. Ain't nobody going to be like, wait, two hours? Why are we doing that? So I'm going to split it up. And between that, she and I will schedule time and we're going to have back to back recordings of this here. And if you have anyone that you know personally, and I have people, but I don't think, honestly speaking, they're not healed enough to come in a conversation like this and not be a victim. They're going to talk from a victim perspective and not a healed perspective. Right. Right. So if you have anyone that you can let them join in and have a relation to do with this topic and make all other females feel like they're not alone, you're not alone. This is a thing. Right. So right. that being said, yeah. I want her to tell you where you can find her on social media, where they can find you, et cetera. Hello, my name is Tony Rue, (laughs) and you can find me on Instagram and YouTube at real underscore queen underscore reflection, real underscore queen underscore reflection. You can find me on there, YouTube and Instagram. Thank you so much. (laughs) Yay, guys, check out our YouTube channel. I would love to send this to her, but I have not figured out how I can send this to her. I, a lot of people ask me to send stuff that I've recorded with them. And I don't know because it's so huge. I can't email it to them. And I would love for her to put this on her channel as well. So she can have like a piece of this on her thing. Oh, too. I can so do that. You can... <laughs> so I don't know how that's going to happen. I put, your, I put the other your series on there. I could, you put... Because if, oh, if, you if you post it on your YouTube, somebody mm-hmm. can add it to their channel from, from your YouTube. Girl, for real? I didn't even know yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, if you, hell. If you, go on my, if you go on my channel and go on to where I put my stuff at, when you yeah. that masculine toxicity, right? Uh, I put that on there. I put, put that in my hill. What's your you name? You. What's uh, your name? Queen, oh, same Queen thing. Reflection. Mm-hmm. I subscribe to you, so let me. It's on uh, there. Yeah, it's in there. I didn't know you can do that. <laughs> Good. Well, it's there we go. It's going to be in the guys. <laughs> We're going to get it. We yeah. Get it. Underscore queens underscore reflection. 
Let me see if he popped up. You know what? No, you give me a comment. I can definitely just go in your comments and. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I see. I right. Y'all did. Y'all did amazing. Y'all did amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. It was a good lesson. That recording was really, really good. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I put, I put that. I'm like, I put that series right because I'm like everybody. I feel like everybody needs to see that video. That's a mm. great starter. Yes, of like it feeling is. to see because you get you 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 both broke down masculine and feminine energy. Yeah, and it's something that a lot of us do not face. A lot of us mm. don't face. So yeah, but <clears throat> I am going to end this here, guys. We're again, we're going to be making this a series. So we're going to be back. Please go follow this queen on her channel as well. And if she wants me to come to her channel to do a vibe, I will always be down to do a vibe for your channel as well too. Okay? With that being said, guys, have a fantastic day. I know that this topic was heavy. It was long overdue. I just didn't want to do it right now, but hell, it's here. So accept it. How y'all business? <laughs> Bye, everyone. Hey, you. Yes, you. So... Thank you so much for watching my video and I hope that you enjoyed the video and thank you so much for coming to my page. So I would like for you to subscribe and I also want you to watch the last video and I hope that you enjoy everything on my channel. Thank you.